welcome to the Mulberry Leadership Conversation. Going to give everyone just a little bit of time to log on. Okay. So again, welcome to the Mulberry Leadership Conversation today. We're so excited to have you here. My name is Laura Beck. I'm the Director of Marketing at Mulberry Talent Partners. We are a recruiting and staffing full service boutique agency headquartered in Portland, Oregon. We specialize in the professional placement of human resources, administrative, professional and financial office, accounting, payroll and operations positions for direct hire, temp to hire and contract roles. This is our kickoff leadership conversation. We're so excited uh, to be welcoming a really great speaker who is near and dear to our hearts here at Mulberry. So we are joined by Lauren Francis. She is the fabulous founder of Mulberry Talent Partners. She is a longtime entrepreneur and very experienced talent acquisition professional, bringing over 25 years of experience. We're excited to welcome Adi Clavet. She is the um, CEO and co-founder of Business Success Consulting Group, headquartered here in Portland as well. She brings over 25 years of experience helping businesses grow and scale to be prosperous organizations. So I'm going to go on ahead and hand it over to Adi and Lauren. Today they're going to be discussing best practices, skills, and techniques for managing a remote, remote workforce, as well as just managing your own work um, when you're working remote in this, in this new world. Also, I apologize. I wanted to add, we want this to be very interactive. Go on ahead and use the Q&A function if there's anything that we haven't covered. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, Adi. We are one of the lucky um, people that have worked with Adi in the past, and she helped, has helped and continues to help our organization immensely. So thank you, Adi. And uh, Adi and I met through uh, the fabulous world of networking and have connected through uh, her work with Mulberry and many other ways. So we're so happy to have you today. Thank you, Lauren. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So let's get started. Let's just jump right into it. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, tools and some of the challenges about, uh, you know, just in regards to working remotely. And right. Adi, what are some of the challenges that you find uh, people are having, you know, in regards to working remotely. So I'm going to go over the challenges, but also as Laura said, let's make it interactive. So if anyone in that is listening to us right now has their own challenges, or we want to share their challenges, go ahead and put it in the chat box so we can address that. Mm -hmm. The main challenges that I see is, uh, first of all, how to get people on task, making sure that they're keeping their tasks, that they are meeting their goals. How do you manage remotely? I mean, that's really the encompassing subject that then you can break it down into how do you make sure that people are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing? How many meetings? I mean, is it how many meetings are enough? Like what is too many? What is not enough, right? I mean, do we, how do we communicate? What are the channels of communication? Like when we're in, when we're in person, we can go to the conference room and have a conference or we can go and talk for a couple of minutes about something we don't have to initiate a zoom call right but now it's like what do we do do we use zoom do we use slack do we use the phone do we email you know do we go into this big email chain so it's really a lot of um, about communication about managing you know you want to know what your employees are doing and you don't want to micromanage right but then you they don't answer the phone so you're wondering what's happening right and also for your own managing your own time and that's what I see a lot in terms of there are no boundaries anymore, right? I mean, before you would get out of the house, you know, go to work, come back, and maybe you can do a little bit of work on your laptop or whatnot, but you actually changed the location of where you're at. But now if your commute is from your bedroom to the office, which is a few steps down the hallway, then you can just stay there until midnight, you know, so where, where are the boundaries? So that applies to employees and employers, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs, but also the employees because employees now can stay longer, um, whether they are, it's a demand to stay longer or they want to stay longer. So that's a challenge. And of course, the challenge of having the kids, the, the pets, the, you know, everything else that goes around in the household, how do you manage that? And that is a challenge as well. So I think those are the main ones 
that I encountered. What about you? What do you hear? Um, I, I hear the same. And one of the questions I had was, what do leaders do and how do they manage emails after hours? Meaning that does the employee feel like they're like they're missing work or they're you know let's say it's 7 30 at night and and how how does how how best to manage that piece you know what i personally did with my employees is i told them you know i work long hours because i you know i don't mind doing that because i might take you know a chunk during the day that i don't work but i want to work when i say long hours i mean i work i like to work at night that's a, that's my best time to concentrate and to uh create and I don't mind doing that. You know, I get everything ready and then I sit down and do that, you know, instead of working. For me, working, let's say, from 8 to 10 at night is better than to working from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. So when I do that, I told them, I'm going to send you emails because as I'm thinking about it, I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I'm sending the emails out or asking different requests or mm -hmm. I might send you a message. But don't, you don't, because they can see it on their phones. That's the thing. It's not that they can't, just, it's not like they're just turning their cell phone, their computer at work and they don't see it until the next day. So just don't, just ignore it. Just don't deal with it until you come to work. So I'm telling this story because it's really about setting the boundaries of, yes, I'm going to be communicating, but I, you don't, I don't expect you to answer me if you're working from seven to four, that those are the hours that I expect you to answer. It depends on the type of employees. I mean, you might have an employee that is an executive or a salesperson, and you this is part of the expectations, part of also the compensation. So um, then you just, it's about setting expectations. It's about saying, okay, so this is how we communicate and when we communicate, and this is what I expect. Yes, if I send the email during working hours, I expect you to answer. If I'm sending the email after hours, don't answer. And we have to set those boundaries because we all have the cell phone that has all of our communications all the time and we get the notifications. So setting the boundaries and setting expectations is very important. Yeah. And with Asana, you know, you can log off, uh, log off receiving communications, which right. I think helps that, that set those. Right. Okay. Oh, for sure. Um, and with, and Asana, then with all the, all the different, as all the different software, you can, um, basically pause notifications and mm -hmm. you can do it automatically that you only get notified. And I do that too. I only get notifications between let's say eight and five. Sure. You know, after that it can wait, maybe I'm working, but I'm not necessarily want to have the notifications all the time. So if right. somebody else is working late, I don't necessarily want to get it. So I won't get it until the next morning. Got it. Okay. What are some of the tools that you recommend to stay productive and when, you know, when you're working remotely? So it's very important to have those tools, first of all, because if you are still using the same tools that you use when you were in the office with others, it's not going to work. It's not going to work as well. So if you're not using any tools right now, I highly recommend it to check the tools that uh, we're going to talk about so you can see what works for you. And I'm just throwing tools there um, that I like to use personally. They also, majority of them are free or cost very little a month. You know, I'm not... Um, bias towards one or another. I mean, I, I, if I am, I'll, I'll mention what I like, but I'll give you some options, but I definitely recommend using those tools. And I'm going to start with the different categories. So if you look at the, all the tools that you need, you need, those are the categories that you will need. You need email. And on the email, I recommend using tools to manage the email. And I will talk about that. Then I recommend using a tax, a task management software such as Asana or Monday, where you can actually have your projects and your tasks managed there. I recommend using a CRM or a database of sorts where you can have all your clients, customers, patients, whatever it is that are being managed there. Depends on what you do, I would also recommend having a system where you actually manage the workflow. And I know it sounds like a lot of systems. So if you're big enough, you can definitely invest in, in a system that incorporates everything together. But if you're trying to use off the shelf um, software that you can do right now and sign up for free, that's, those are different categories that you have to make sure that you have. You also have to have a calendar, a shared calendar that you can use. And um, that's pretty, and a document management. So where are you storing your documents, right? So now if you're working remotely, you need to have something on the cloud that everyone ha can access. 
Now, if you're using, let's say you're in the Microsoft ecosystem and they have all of this, they have a solution to each one of them, each one of those items that I just mentioned. But let's say you don't, you're not using the Office 365 or the Office or the Microsoft ecosystem. So I'm gonna give you some tools, some name of the tools and you can look them up and definitely try them out. So let's start with email. So what I like to use, I, I use with a sane box, which is sane, like being sane and box, B-O-X. So sane box and what it does, it actually takes the emails because the email is your gate to the organization of communication, right? So what sane box does, it automatically sorts my email. So it takes those that I can do later. I can actually look at later and it takes all the newsletters that I subscribe to. And even you think, well, I'm not subscribing to too many newsletters. Well, believe me, I have like about, a, I didn't think I'm subscribing to any. And I get in my sane news, that's how they call it, where you put the newsletters. I get about probably 80 a day, between 50 and 100 every single day, right? Because it's just repetitive because it comes at different times. And, and then there are, you know, you sign up for a seminar and then there are people that send it multiple times. You know, you just like, you'll see, how much how many emails you get a day i don't know about you lauren do you know how many emails you get a day in your inbox i don't even want to say um i call it the email avalanche so that's right so the email avalanche so the thing is like you know you go oh, if, if you think okay i can control the newsletters i can just delete them or put them aside the thing is what happens is that they come at random times at random days so your inbox get full with them as opposed to that particular software automatically puts it into one folder. And I love those newsletters. I mean, I, I send news, a newsletter out. I like other people's newsletters. I learn a lot from it. But if it's in one folder, I can just look at it once a day. At the end of the day, I just go through it. I read the articles that I want. I archive those that I don't. But it takes me a minute as opposed to going through my inbox. And then you get constantly that email that comes in, right? Sure. And it also has the ability, you have the ability to train the software, what emails you can look at later as opposed to right now in the inbox. So for me, what I leave in the inbox is emails from clients that takes priority about anything above anything else, but I want to see it in my inbox. Mm -hmm. And any communication from prospects, from referral partners that is urgent, you know, that I train the software to get into my inbox. So that way I can actually control my inbox so it's at zero at the end of the day. Like when I end the day, my inbox is at zero. I don't leave things there. And I'm going to give you some tricks of how I do that. But one of them is using a soft, something like Sandbox. Now, as I mentioned, the email is the gate to the organization. So from the outside. From the inside, I don't use emails internally with my employees. Because that is just, um, it's not, a, in my opinion, not an efficient method of communication. So I use Slack or you can use, one can use Teams or any of those softwares that are actually a communication software. So that way you don't have to use email and you don't have to go the back and forth and then you start seeing all the people on top of it, right? And uh, you just have to control the communication lines and that's why I like using something like Asana or Teams where you can actually communicate directly to the person you want to communicate and you can actually have a conversation but in writing because it's not always doable to pick up the phone. And I know Lauren, you and I talked about it before in terms of like really figuring out like when do you pick up the phone, you know, because you can go into the opposite direction of never picking up the phone and then it becomes very hard to convey a simple communication that then it becomes, it goes to be back and forth on text and you can't really convey the emotions correctly. And it seems like you are mad at somebody when you're not, when it was just like a very simple communication. And you know, I talked about it, especially when it's not going well, you don't want to continue to communicate about it in writing. You want to pick up the phone and call. So some, you know, like um, Slack or Teams have the ability to have, they have a button there to call so you can call via the computer. So let's say you, I'm trying to text you something via Slack or write via Slack. And I see that it's, it's easier if I just communicate, then I can press that button and communicate to you directly. And then we can just talk about it, right? Yeah, and, and then there is also the other aspect of not abusing those channel of communication, right? As we talked about is like, you know, I can be typing about a certain subject and then somebody interjects it and say, oh, happy birthday, Lauren. And then everybody is like a hundred people happy birthday. And before I know it, it's just like, it's at the bottom and I can't see it, right? And then it becomes the avalanche of uh, messages. And it just, it's not different than basically clogging your e email inbox. So mm -hmm. 
that's where you have to have a communication policy on how to use those different tools. What goes on Slack or Teams, what goes on email, when to use the different channels. So that's, again, that's the internal and external communication. Now let's talk about the project management system like Asana, for instance, or Monday.com or projects. So whatever you're using, what I like to do is to set up the targets, the, the tasks. Let's say in Asana, you set up the tasks of the things you need to do and you collaborate with a team. So any communication will be on that task. So let's say our task is to, we have a task, um, you know, contact such and such by this and this date. And, you know, let's say you assign me that task, I contacted that person, I wanna give you information. So instead of putting it in Slack, and then you have to remember where it belongs to or send you an email, I go to my task in Asana, and at the bottom there, are, there, are, there, are, there is a place for comments and questions. So just write it there. And then we can have a conversation about that particular task right there. So it mm -hmm. keeps it all very organized. So that again, the email is the gateway, and then it either goes to one of the folders, it goes on to Slack, it goes on to Asana, and from, for internal processing, and then when you communicate with the client, you can communicate back via email. Mm. So those are some of the systems, you know, we talked about, you know, I said, you know, obviously we have to have a calendar. I really like Calendly, which is a software to um, schedule, a scheduling software. So there's Calendly, there's Acuity, there's different, there are different softwares to schedule, and that makes it easy to um, instead of going back and forth, like when are you available? What should we schedule? You just send your a, a link that links to your calendar with the dates that you and times that you have available, and then your team, either the team or somebody or your customer or somebody external can actually schedule a time on the calendar, and then it's all set. Mm -hmm. Now, Adi, were you the one that told me about Copper with the Google's Copper? No, uh, but what's CRM. that? So the CRM Copper is very right. very. Uh, inexpensive. And it's intuitive too. Intuitive and they just do a tremendous job. So I would recommend Copper to anyone that's looking for an inexpensive yet very effective CRM. Good. And you know, the Amazing. CRM is, is so, what I would look in the CRM, like why, why using CRM? Like, you know, I'm, we're talking about all this. I know we're throwing a lot of information, but we have all these different systems. Sure. They all has its purpose and you want to make sure you don't cross purpose, right? So the CRM is where you will have the information about your leads, your prospects, your clients. But and every time there is a touch, you can actually document it there and assign activities. So then you don't, you don't need to have the spreadsheets and this is a paper and all of that other stuff, you just have it there. So yeah. Very efficient, absolutely. So I think we went into the software and the tools through this uh, through this this one question, but let's go into what are some of the favorite uh, tricks that you found to stay organized and to get things done that you'd like to share with, with uh, the group today? Sure, so one of the tricks is that I am a strong believer in documenting the processes and procedures and you know we we went through this whole project of doing that right so why why are we doing it so if you have well documented processes and procedures you can train very easily mm -hmm. you are not you know it, it takes the fear from losing a key person or any person right because you know that it's documented you can train easily you will be able to hire you will be able to train and you also know that they're gonna be trained the way that you want them to be trained without taking a lot of your time. It can also allow, it, it allows you to have a routine because you can follow a certain process, you can follow those procedures, you, your employees, the team, then it, it, it really saves time because you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Mm -hmm. And it also helps in terms of quality control. So if something doesn't go as expected, or something was not done right, you can always go back and ask yourself, is there a process? What was the process? What was not done? So it, it's like a map, you know, it's kind of like uh, driving from point A to point B using a really good GPS, as opposed to just figuring out how am I gonna get from point A to point B and getting lost in all the side roads that can 
basically it's it's a time waster. So that's the one one trick is not to waste the time by actually having the processes and procedures well documented. Another thing that I really like is you know scheduling my day at the end of the day for the next day, because then you can look at all the tasks that you have to do, and you have to make and make sure that what you are assigning yourself actually fits into your calendar. You know, because that's what I see is people is trying to schedule, let's say you have that many minutes in a day. So you have eight hours, 60 minutes, 480 minutes, right? Let's say you want to work eight hours. But then you schedule yourself for 960 minutes because if you actually count all the tasks you have to do and you and you add the amount of time, it will basically double. So then you, you end the day and you feel like very unaccomplished, right? Because you say, oh, it's another day and I have all this list of things to do. So my recommendation is, and that's what I do. I do it, I use Asana and I use my tasks and I actually have a tag, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, you know, so I can block, I can see like how, my, how long each task is going to take me. And I stop after I get to, this, to the amount of minutes that I have in a day in my work day that I want to work. So I don't set myself for a loss, I set myself for a win, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're working from home, you also have to, um, and let's say you have kids and you have to homeschool and you have to integrate all the other things that are going on, take it into consideration. You know, if you only have four hours during the work day that you can work and another two at night because you want to be flexible in terms of your time, don't schedule yourself for six hours. It's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you can't, you know, the bucket is full after a certain point and it will just spill over. So just make sure that you don't overfill your bucket because it's not going to work. That's like, you know, the project management management one on one. You have to have the allocated time and when to achieve, when to end the project. You can't jam more into it because the project is going to go longer. So, right. so I have a question. Are you a hundred percent using technology? What about the people that like to write or the old fashioned, you know, you know, I have a, I have a solution for that as well. So what I use is I use OneNote for my notes. Mm -hmm. So I basically, I write, I have pieces of paper all over, you see with my, <laughs> I actually write, I have a pen and I always like to write because that's, I just, I just feel that way that, you know, when I, when I listen to it, I talk to a client and when I take notes, I just take my notes. I like to circle. I know I have my highlighter right here and I just like, I like that. So what I do is when I'm done, I take a picture of it that is already in the app. Really? Yeah, in OneNote, there is a, um, an icon of the camera. You take a picture of it and it uploads it. So then I have it, my notes for the client right here um, on OneNote so I don't have to keep folders because otherwise, what are you going to do with all of this? That's fabulous. You know, Tracy, or was it Gigi that recommended also a planner that mm -hmm. people like to write? That's right. Full focus planner was recommended. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Laura's joined us. Is there a question? We had a question come in. Yeah. Yes. So Amani asks, are there any tips for folks who consistently struggle to estimate a task's time accurately? Hmm. Great question. Yeah, a very good question. So what I would recommend to do is to keep a log. Basically, keep a log of all the tasks that you do during the day, like the main ones, right? And then time yourself. You know, it is tedious, but if you really want to make sure that you can allocate the right amount of time, you have to do a time study. You know, my background is industrial engineering. I've done a lot of time study. That's how you make things better is you have to do time studies, right? You have to be able to know that a certain task takes you a certain amount of time. For instance, if you're sitting down and you are need to write a proposal and you know that the proposal usually takes you between an hour and an hour and a half. So that's the time for allocating to a proposal is 90 minutes. And, but you have to time yourself. Now you have to time yourself without all the extra activities around it because I, I know for myself when I have to sit down and do a task that I'm not really excited about or that's a little bit more difficult or I have to think about it. Let's say I need to write a proposal to a client that on that I'm you know not something that I'm used usually do. It's a little bit different. Then I need to really find myself in a, I find myself doing other things before I actually do that task, right? I mean, so just to make sure that you are timing the amount of time it takes you when you start a task to the end and just sit and do that. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know that that's how long it takes. So whatever your line of work is, break it down to blocks of actions. That's why the processes and procedures mm -hmm. are so important. 
document the procedure from beginning to end with steps and time yourself and then get an average and then you'll know that in order to finish this task, this is how much it takes. Hmm. Excellent idea. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you for the question. Do we have another one or just? I think Scott has a point or Scott just added to our to our chat, I think. To our chat, I think, yeah. So he, Scott says that he recommends Rocket Book Planner, right? And right. this is something that I've seen as well, where you can, um, it's basically an erasable notepad, and I believe that they also have an app. Right. That's great. Scan I'll check it out. You know, the reason why I, I started doing all of it virtually is because, um, because we're working virtually, and I need my team to be able to access my notes too. So let's say if I want... Um, if I want to um, send something to my team for my handwritten notes, so then if I upload it to OneNotes, then they can use it. But I like this idea, so I'm gonna check check that out, the planner. Thank um, you. One question that, that came up when we were talking about this, um, this session with you, Adi, is what do people, what do, people do about um, The, the, question, the question came up, what do people do about uh, stand-up meetings that, that a lot of people are doing sort of day, daily meetings at nine o'clock or 8.30 or whatever. Do you feel that that is too much five days a week? You know, I, I do it myself and I find that, that when I don't do it, then I lose, then it's, it's just, um, it, the day is not structured enough mm -hmm. and I'm not in, in touch with my team. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we do an early morning meeting like for 15 minutes, but I have an agenda. So it doesn't just go all over the place, right? We have the same thing. We're going over calendars. Okay, this is what we're accomplishing. Right. This is the target for the day. This is what you do. This is what you do. Um, as I said, we know we all, I put my, ta my tasks in Asana the night before. I ask my team, they do the same. So we all look at it ahead of time. So we don't waste the time to go over, okay, what tasks are we going to do today? Sure. But we do have that, we have to have that personal touch, I feel, of let's start a day with your team. Your team is here. We're all there because otherwise, you know, you're at your home. The other one is in their home as well. And you don't know, are, are they, did they start work? I mean, what, what are they doing now, right? Are they still in bed? I, I, it's just like, I'm, you know, it's not that bad, but it's kind of like you you don't have that accountability. And I feel like having that meeting first thing in the morning, it just gives you the accountability. You see your team members, you know, you're all on the same page, you're working. And I think also touching base in the middle of the day, it's good too. Even if just sending a Slack, how are you doing? How's it going? Sure. I try to do it with my team members just to, to make sure that I'm also available for them because that's another thing if I'm on the phone or you're if I'm on zoom you know they don't see me they, they can't see that I'm on the phone right and the only thing is they see on my calendar I have another zoom call I want to make sure that in between we touch base that we keep the human element that we actually have a conversation a communication or not necessarily but like what are you doing how is it like what task have you done but how's it going how's the day you know just like the, the regular talk that we used to have when we actually were face to face. Absolutely. So Laura, are we nearing the end of our time together? We are, that went by very quickly. Yeah, Adi, that was very, very helpful. I learned so much. I appreciate thank you. That. Yeah. So, that was great, yeah, thank you for having me here. Yeah, in closing, we wanted to share our upcoming leadership conversations. On October 13th, we're going to be welcoming uh, Rich Mangello. He's going to be discussing how to manage tension in the workplace, especially as it pertains to the pandemic, the upcoming election, and all of the social justice issues that we're facing here in the United States. And then on October 20th, we're going to welcome Jill Freeman. She's an experienced employee experience consultant. And she's gonna be talking to us about how to engage employee communications that are really effective um, and eye-catching and engaging. So we're really excited about um, our upcoming October workshops. And then this is how to stay in touch with Lauren and Adi. So I would encourage you to connect to them on LinkedIn if you haven't already. There are their emails and websites. So thank you so much for joining us today. We know you have a lot of options out there as it, as it pertains to webinars. And so we really appreciate your time and value having you here. Thank you, Adi and Lauren, for a very informative uh, conversation. I think we have a lot of things to think about and to implement. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.